It is so messed up that the only changes that are coming to ODSP is that you can make a little bit more money before they deduct money and that what they're deducting now is going to be a little less. So for those of you who don't know, um, they're raising it from only being able to make $100 a month to then you'll be able to make $1,000 a month. And before, um, anything that you made over the $100 would be deducted at 50%. And now anything you make over the $1,000 would be deducted at 25%. This really does not do much to help anyone on ODSP or any type of disability, the disability support program because there are really three main types of people who end up on disability. First, there are the people who truly just straight up cannot work at all, which is 100% fine. And those people deserve to be given a livable wage to live on. I know it's not really the age, but like a livable support to live on because their lives are valuable, they are valuable, and they shouldn't have to be in legislative property. Then you have the group of people who... Then you have the group of people who are disabled but really could work, but discrimination basically stops them from working. So to give you an example, you would have someone who is blind or visually impaired. It doesn't matter how qualified that person is. They could be just as qualified as the next candidate or even more qualified than the next candidate, but a company will often see the fact that they're blind because they can't hide that they're blind or they might come in with a guide dog or a cane or something that makes it very obvious that they have some sort of visual impairment and see that they're them as a company are going to have to accommodate this person and that's going to cost them money and they're going to have to buy equipment and whatever and so that they're just never going to hire someone like that. So then those people literally can't find a job even though they are capable workers but their disability because of discrimination prevents them from getting a job. And then you have the third group of people who could work if there was like more flexible working but in our capitalist society that just doesn't happen and jobs don't have benefits and it's kind of a lot to explain and I'm not going to have time in this video to explain so I'm going to make a part two to explain that third group of people because I think this is very important this is where a lot of people fall but realistically it still doesn't help these people because of how everything is structured so go over to part two that I'm about to post because I think this is something that's very important that we really need to start talking about. So the third group is where things get really messed up. And I'm going to just use like me and what happened to me as an example of this. So I have always been disabled, but what really like disabled me where it becomes hard to work a lot of the time is in 2018, I was working at a daycare, someone left water or a kid had an accident, we don't know. Um, I had two kids with me. I slipped and fell under these like puzzle piece foam mats. I caught the kids, didn't catch myself, tore my MCL, but physio isn't covered and I've never been able to afford physio and the daycare basically fired me because I was on crutches and I can't take care of kids on crutches. Okay, so fast forward to now. I need to go to the pain clinic. I'm supposed to be doing Aquafit and I'm supposed to be doing physio. So the pain clinic is the only thing that is covered under OHIP. Right now I only go once a week, but ideally I would go twice a week. So if I'm working, that means twice a week, I need to go to the pain clinic to go, to go get what I need to get done. And then there'd be Aquafit, which is going to be another appointment. And then there would be physio. So to get to these appointments, I can either drive or I can take public transit. So taking public transit is cheaper but it would take longer, which would take more time out of a job. But then if I have a car, well, now I need to pay for a car payments. I need to pay for insurance and I need to pay for gas or electricity, depending on what kind of car you have. On top of all of that, I have a service dog. She's here. She's sleeping. Okay. So even if I could somehow manage to do all of these appointments in like my lunch break every day, I also have this service dog who needs to be taken care of as well. So that's at least a walk every day, which is usually what my lunch break would consist of would be walking her. So now I need to find time to do that and or have money to have a dog walker. No company is that flexible. They should be. People were a lot more flexible during the like height of the pandemic, but companies are not that flexible. So then you've kind of left 
this third group of disabled people between a rock and a hard place. Either we choose to go and work and then that we make ourselves worse and more unhealthy because then we're not going to all these appointments that we should be going to in order to not be in, at least for me, in constant pain all of the time. Or you choose not to work and then you're forced to make only a thousand dollars a month, which you cannot live on. So then you're just in poverty. So increasing the amount of money that somebody earns for like ODSP does not actually solve the problem in actually supporting people with disabilities with this disability support program. So with all of those stumbling blocks in the way, how is this raising how much the people on disability can make actually doing anything to support or actually solving the root issue? There will always be people on disability who cannot work and those people truly deserve to be supported in a decent manner. That is not the argument here. But also, if you really want to support, there are a lot of disabled people who would love to work. And the only way they can work is to be accommodated, but nobody wants to accommodate. So all over TikTok, when people talk about this, I see all these videos and Doug Ford himself, his rhetoric is, well, get back to work. How? Explain how. What employer is going to allow somebody to be making like a full time wage, but also have like five appointments they need to go to a week, every single week. How is that going to work? And COVID is a mass disabling event. It's not over. More people died in 2022 from COVID than in 2020 because we're all, I guess, pretending that we can live with COVID and it's not doing anything anymore when it's literally killing and disabling people. So you're going to have more and more people applying for disability, but the disability program doesn't actually do anything to support people with disabilities. And the things that they can and won't pay for are so stupid because so like I mentioned, like Aquafit is not going to be covered by OHIP. I have to find the money for that. Um, Physio, which has been my main issue. I would not be in the position that I'm in right now if I had access to physio from the time I got injured. But I can't do that because it's not covered under OHIP because somehow physical therapy is not health care. Um, but they'll pay for me to get a wheelchair, though. Like, if it gets so bad that I can't walk anymore, they'll pay, like, thousands and thousands of dollars for a customized wheelchair. But, like, can't use half, less than half of that money to get me the physical therapy I need. So this is why this entire program doesn't make sense. And we are in this mass disabling event where more and more people are going to become disabled via COVID and long COVID and the effects of that. But we're not doing anything to overhaul this system. This has kind of been Doug Ford's MO with literally everything that he does, but he's looking like he's doing something when he's actually doing nothing. I am 100% open to anyone's suggestions, comments, questions, whatever, ask what you want to ask. But I think this important is just, bleh. I think this conversation is very important because there are so many newly disabled people and nothing's changing. Nothing is getting better. It's just smoke and mirrors. And we need to actually like address this problem.